What is up guys? Ishu Jibin Soy and Shu bless you. So today you guys really want Kimbanda. <laughs> um I uploaded my first video Kimbanda. I think it'll be the last one I had to do for a little bit because you know this channel mainly is of Umbanda. But since I'm a high priest of both, I'm a Tata of Kimbanda and a Zelador of Umbanda, well I guess I, I have to uh, appease you guys a little bit. Uh, and to talk about more Kimbanda and the difference between Umbanda and Kimbanda, alright? So I got asked not only in the YouTube comments but also on my Discord and my WhatsApp um, to ask to explain more of the spells of Umbanda and the spells of Kimbanda, how they vary and how they, how they differ, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you guys the differences between the spells of Umbanda and the spells of Kimbanda and how they work, okay? Now, to preface this video, I'm going to explain the main difference. Umbanda does not sacrifice any animal or any blood. Okay? Or I should say red blood. Right? Kimbanda does. Okay? Kimbanda, we sacrifice uh, anything ranging from a dove to a cow to 70 cows, depending on what the job is. Okay? Now... Umbanda, you have more of the financial uh, security, financial spells, the healing spells, um, and the healing baths. For example, I've done uh, spells for clients with Obalai, which is a saint of healing. Okay, uh, I've done spells to uh, cure people with cancer. I've done. Sorry. I've done spells to cure people with AIDS, with COVID. Uh, I've cured people with really everything. The only tough issue I have is mental illness because then I have to delve into Kimbanda because mental illness is on the soul already. At least that's my beliefs. You already come with those certain issues, okay? So also another very popular spell that I do in Umbanda is not really a spell, but it's called a Pade Jishu which is basically food for a shoe, all right? Now, a pate is a clay pot, all right? And it could be prepared differently, depending if it's a shoe or pomagira, and what a shoe it is. Usually, half of it is made with flour or special flour and azeite uh, de which is a hot oil, and the other half is prepared, uh, of course, with whiskey or whatever drink spirit says. But of course, it could all change instantly depending on what the spirit demands and for what reason they demand it, okay? Uh, what a pata is, it, it protects you, of course, but it also opens your path. It acts as a beacon for other issues to come eat, okay? And once those issues come eat, you know, let's say you even if you dedicate it to let's say a shoe capa preta, a shoe black cape, you're gonna have not only black cape working on you, capa preta working on you directly because you fed him, but you're also going to have a shoe morcego that was passing by, a shoe bat, a shoe trancahua, a shoe lock paths that are just passing by. If they want to bite, they want to drink of the whiskey, they're gonna go and they're gonna work for you. Okay. Now I've seen this work incredibly in the past. Okay, but each case is different, of course. You know, sometimes people throw spells on you that need to be unbroken in Umbanda, and then there's sometimes where I have to go to Kimbanda to break spells so I can open financial paths. Okay, I've seen people literally, I've done Padez and Shu for them the next day, they got $4,000 out of nowhere. Okay, of course, money doesn't materialize, money doesn't grow on trees, but issues will open doors for you. Okay, you will get jobs, you'll get phone calls you're not expecting, you will get clients you're not expecting. I've seen it work in incredible ways, okay? I've seen offers that you're not expecting. You know, money doesn't grow on trees, but a shoe does give you ways to get it. Just can't be lazy. Uh, another thing in Umbanda that we do is cleaning houses, spiritually cleaning energies, okay? Uh, something very popular, especially with the line of Bayanus, especially with my Bayanus, Zed Bayanu. He loves to clean people with coconuts, so that's one thing he'll do. Um, he'll probably, let's say if it's Zabayanu, depending on how, how, what type of job he needs to clean, he usually 
get a blue candle and burn it on top of the coconut. And just, you know, clean the person with it and smash it on the floor. And usually the coconut is rotten inside. Just rotten. It's the, it's the most fascinating thing sometimes. Even I, like, when when they tell me why God just didn't tell me these things, because obviously I'm not here usually. It's usually my spirit that's here. I'm fascinated with these jobs, okay? So the the next main difference is, like I was touching earlier about the, the difference, the Umbanda, we use green blood and white blood. Green blood, uh, be it uh herbs grass any any flowers you know that that is green blood and white blood for us is water purity we don't believe in spilling human blood or spilling animal blood okay that's why usually in Umbanda you have a high priest and then second in charge being the Pai Pequeno or Mai Pequena the third in charge Pai Criador Mai Criador and then you know of course you have the Oguns that are helping as well with the music the, the, the drums are very important as they capture a lot of energy and they simulate the energy as well. They set the mood. Um, but yeah, usually there's a very, very stern hierarchy because it, it's strength in numbers really in Umbanda. And there's so much strength in Umbanda because of the love in numbers. Okay. Now, Kimbanda. Also, one thing I want to touch up on is usually jobs in Umbanda, they're very cheap because they don't have to have sacrifices. And for example, my temple, each temple is different. I don't charge people for them to come here to speak to spirits. The only time I charge is if I have uh, costs. For example, I have to buy candles or if I have to do work for your saint or something like that. Yes, I'll charge. I even usually tell clients, go buy the material and just pay me for my hand. But clients usually, they want to come to me and give me everything because I find things cheaper. Uh, Kimbanda, main difference, like I was saying, spills blood depending on what needs to be done and what spells. Now... I tend to stray away and not try to do dark spells as much, but some there are some cases where I do accept uh, certain spells, like destruction spells, revenge spells, separation spells, all the dark stuff, all the dark magic can't really be accomplished in Kimbanda. You just have to have a skill tata with the skill spirits. Right here, back here, it's one of my assentamentos of issues. Uh, the other one is behind it, below it, then the other one's right here in front of me. Okay, so as you guys can see, people who are watching this who know what Kimbanda is, they see exactly who protects me and exactly who helps me. Eshu Belzebub does amazing work. Amazing, amazing, amazing work. Not only in Umbanda when he chooses to, but in Kimbanda as well. You know, I'm not gonna say certain things that happen. Uh, legal reasons and also YouTube I don't want to get demonetized and I don't want to lose my channel and get a strike so let's just say Belzebub has put in some work okay destruction spells have been accomplished many times uh, revenge spells have been accomplished many times uh, death spells I can't talk about but I'm pretty sure you guys can guess uh, Belzebub mainly deals with stuff like that Okay, and for the love spells, usually right here, Dama Noichi, she takes care of my love spells. Uh, and Capa Preta helps her out. Usually, issues don't don't meddle with love spells. Usually, it's the Pumajira, so she mostly does all the work. But yeah, and Kimbanda, those are the spells that are usually offered. You know, there are a multitude of more offers, a multitude more of, of spells that are that are done. Uh, however, Kimbanda is more expensive than Umbanda. Also, side note, I do not initiate anybody into King Bunda because it's a lot of responsibility. And it's something that I can't trust just anybody. Imagine me getting a protege, teaching him more than 10,000 spells. And he, he decides to, you know, just let loose on the world. Imagine how, people, how many people are going to suffer, you know. For me, for example, I know someone pisses me off. Shrug my shoulders. That's it. Imagine if somebody knows spells I know. <laughs> the person can even just look at them wrong. You know, and, oh, I'm going to write down your name. And I, I, I'm going to go and get a black chicken. And I'm going to stab it 21 times with your name. And I'm going to, you know, it's just too much responsibility. Okay. Now, Umbanda, I do have godchildren. 
I have unofficial godchildren all over the world. I have some in Portugal, I have some in Brazil, a lot in Brazil. Uh, I had to drop a few because I just can't manage so many godchildren. In Brazil, I have maybe around 40 to 50 currently. Uh, here in America, I have about three or four, three or four being unofficial and one being official. Um, the main difference here in, uh, in America is it's hard to spread Umbanda, especially with such a small temple. My temple is very small. And the problem is I have a storefront that's not mine in the front that sells spiritual stuff. So people get confused and think, hey, that's Umbanda, but it's not. So that's where a lot of confusion stems from as well. All right. But you, hopefully soon I'll be moving out of here. I'll get a big temple for everybody to come in so I can help everyone. Uh, Umbanda, like I was saying, one of the uh, one of the services I do offer is extending my hand, uh, teaching people, uh, having them as my God child, doing the Rodi, just like Stephen was talking about in previous videos. Uh, it's a change in their lives, you know. Stephen never used Kimbanda ever in his life, ever, ever. Everything was done in pure Umbanda. Now, of course, people want Kimbanda because Kimbanda is like this. Kimbanda is almost instant. Okay. I've seen, I've had customers, I tell them, listen, what do you want? They, they're like, listen, because in, in Kimbanda, I go by Master Gio de Belzebub, or Master Gio Beelzebub, okay? They say, Master, I want, say, $400,000, all right? Well, how fast do you want it? She's like, what's the difference? Well, depending on how fast you want it is, Depends on how much I'm going to have to charge because of how much animals I'm going to have to kill. Let's say I want it a month from now. All right, well, I'm going to have to kill 72 goat for that. And one, and maybe like seven bull. How much is it going to cost? Give me like, well, 90,000. It'll happen. Give me a quarter now. Uh, and then in two weeks, pay the other quarter, which will make it half. And once you get the rest of the money, just pay me. And I got paid. The lady got four hundred thousand dollars. No, I think she got five hundred thousand. Like a hundred thousand dollars more. So everything worked out. Well, of course, money talks in Kimbanda. Umbanda is different. Umbanda it may take a little bit longer, but it's gonna get done. You know, people just humanity just doesn't have patience nowadays. You know, every everyone wants instantaneous gratification, which is the problem. Especially in spiritual journey, you can't have the need and desire for instant gratification. Like for me, I need money, right? World revolves around money, but I'm not gonna go ahead and, you know, cut open 72 goats for money, no. I tell my godchildren all the time, it's best to get paid in blessings than it is to get paid in money. So that's why I help so much people in the Umbanda. Usually healing spells in the Umbanda, I don't charge. If I see somebody that's really sick or someone that really needs help in Umbanda or Kimbanda even, I do the job for free, you know. There's one foundation in which I pride myself in and pride my temple in. Help those that need it, okay? Now, help those in need doesn't mean I'm gonna go ahead and give the person a million dollars or, you know, kill the rival or anything, no. If if they're in the, in the rut, basically, help the person out the rut, you know? Extend your hand, you know? Like, for example, I've had godchildren who I've literally paid out of my pocket $1,500 just so they can get out of the rut. Just so I can buy the material for them to get out of that rut. Now, unfortunately, some of them are ungrateful, but it is what it is. So, that's the main differences between Umbanda and Kimbanda. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, drop them down in the comments. Also, guys, I'm going to be dropping my WhatsApp down in the comments as well. Uh, in the description, actually, I'm going to be dropping my WhatsApp. If you guys have any questions, you guys want to reach out to me, you guys could do it through WhatsApp. Any questions about services, any questions about my temple. I am located in New Jersey, uh, near Newark. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, drop it down in the comments. And you guys have a blessed day. My father, Beelzebub, open your paths. Guessing, será?